Before I get to today's project, I want to thank Joseph for recommending that I check out another Turner's work. He does beautiful work. His name, if I'm pronouncing it right, is Deepas Swaruda. Sorry if I've pronounced that wrong. I don't understand a word the man says. He's speaking in Slovak, but he does beautiful work. And let's face it, you can watch a Turner and learn more than you will from his words at times. I recommend you check him out, subscribe to his channel, support him, just see what you think of it. I'm going to put a link to his channel in the description box down below the video so you can check him out. Do it, I think you'll enjoy his work. Today's project is something that is not going to appeal to a whole lot of people. You may be interested in seeing how it works, but it's not likely that most of you are going to want to make this. When I do my videos, at the end I quite often like to show the product that I've done, and I like to be able to make it spin if it's something I've turned, so that you can get a look at it from all sides. So, in the past, I've just done this with my hand, very slowly turned it, tried to make it even, maybe even it up a little bit in the editing, but it's never looked quite right. So I've wanted a turntable that I could fuse that would be variable in speed, so I could slow it down or speed it up. And the ones that I could find to purchase, usually the ones I liked were expensive, two, three hundred dollars. Well, I'm a little cheap, and besides, I like to make something myself if I can. So I put this together. What I've done is, I've got three different diameters of discs in here, made from plywood. This goes on the lathe, and I've got a strip of bicycle tire tube. I simply put that around here, onto this, and then my lathe will spin it. Now the lathe, minimum speed I have is 100 RPM. I wanted to bring that speed down to about 4 RPM. Now to do that, I needed to decide mathematically on the size of the disc and the size of what I'll call the drive spindle. To bring it down from 100 to 4 RPM, I had to do a 25 to 1 ratio. I had 16 inch plywood scraps around. I didn't want to use good stuff larger than that, so I went with 16. And doing a little math, I found that 3 quarters of an inch, slightly less, is pretty good to get it down to that speed. I also put two smaller discs on here. Not that I'll ever use them, but just to show how it's done if you want to do that. So stick around, I will show you how it works and how I put this together. I hope you're interested. Here you can see the vessel spinning on the turntable. You can also see the platter that it's sitting on and all the junk that's in the background. Well, I want you to see the vessel, but I don't want you to see all the junk in my shop, what a mess it might be. So what I can do is I can go into Photoshop, create a mask. When I apply that mask to the video, it eliminates everything in the background. Once that's eliminated, if I want to, because you don't want to see just the vessel, it's a little boring, I can bring in a background video and apply that. And this is what you see. Now if you're interested, sit back and relax and I'll show you how I put this together. I'm going to use my skew chisel to define the edges of this cove I want to make. This is an inch and a half blank. I'm going to make the cove three quarters of an inch in diameter to give me the ratio I want for turning the disc.
There's the three quarters of an inch. I am not going to sand this. I do not want to polish it up so smooth that the tire tube won't grip in there. I have three square boards of plywood, a 14 inch, a 15 inch, and a 16 inch. I took a straight edge, went from corner to corner, diagonal in both ways, to find the center. Then I used a beam compass to draw the circle the largest I could. Now I'm going to take them to the band saw, cut those circles out roughly, then I'm going to put them on my sanding circle jig on my disc sander to true them up. Then I will show you what I'm going to do next. Let me give a short explanation of how my sanding jig works. This is for doing circles. Now on the bottom I have a runner going this way that slides in the slot of the disc sander table. There's a slot here that this runner slides back and forth and this runner has a small finishing nail sticking up from the bottom, just sticking up about an eighth of an inch. Measured out from the sandpaper I have marks here showing the diameter of the disc that it will sand. In this case I'm using 16 inches. Now what I have to do is place the hole that I've marked in the center with the scratch all over that nail. To make it a little easier I've drawn a line down here, continued around on both ends to the top so I have marks that I can line up on the center of the runner and by feel I should be able to find that hole with the nail. There it is. Now I'm ready to start sanding. To do that I'll turn on the sander, slowly spin this so it sands away the edge and then I'll have a complete nearly perfect circle. It's not going to be perfect because I've got flats on the edge here that don't quite touch but it'll be close enough for my purposes. Now I just need to take some sandpaper, take off the fuzzies around the edge, and it's complete. Now I'm going to change this to do the 15 and 14 inch discs, and then I'll be back. I need to make four more discs. I need another 15 inch, another 16 inch, and two 17 inch discs. And then I'm making them out of some leftover beadboard scrap that I had laying around. I also realized I don't really need to find the exact center of the disc on the nail. Provided the disc is larger than the size I want, in this case I've got it at about 17 and a quarter inches, all I have to do is push my flat spot up against the sandpaper, push it down on the nail, and now when I spin this disc against the sandpaper it'll cut it to the exact size I need. So I need to start up the dust collector and the sander and then I'll spin this to size. The beadboard discs will be used to sandwich the slightly smaller in diameter three quarter inch plywood discs so that the tire tube does not slip off of them. Now I have my first 17 inch disc sanded. I'll sand off these fuzzies again on the back, do the other three discs, and then I'll be back to show you my next step. I drilled a hole through the center of each of the discs, being careful to be right in the center. Put them on a carriage bolt just to keep them that way. I'm going to drive some two and a half inch screws in a few places from both sides to make sure that it doesn't fall apart because I don't want to leave the carriage bolt in there. Before I drilled the hole on the bottom one, I used a compass to make a circle six and one eighth of an inch in diameter. That's to match the six and one eighth inches between the holes on this Lazy Susan mechanism. So I'm going to screw these together and then mount it on here and I'll come back. Well if you stuck with me through that whole thing I hope you enjoyed it. 
I hope you can find some application for it for yourself. I'm sure there are lots of things it can be used for other than what I'm using it for. And if you change the size of the drive spindle, make it a little slimmer, it'll slow it down even more. Make it a little thicker, it'll speed it up a bit. So you can make it to your own specifications. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a good day in your shop and be safe. And I'm going to leave you with a short view of what it looks like when the whole thing is running together. Take care now.